Stay close. Assalamu alaikum. First, I would like to thank the ministry and the organizing committee to invite me to make this presentation. I talk about e, e nose. My talk on the e nose. First, uh, where I go, I took my books, and the best of it is not to write or publish the book. And the interesting part is to mentor many young scientists, academics to publish these books. And this is the most recent one. Future human is the robot. Maybe in the future. We can go to the market and buy a robot and he will drive you to the office because you will have all the applications and he will bring back at home, you will enter in the room, he will ask what you would like to have your dinner. Then you will say, I would like to have pizza. The robot will say, I will check everything and say, no, last week. Last week you had a blood test, you have a high cholesterol and high pressure, you are not allowed to take the pizza. Then he said, okay then, uh, order Subway, vegetarian and healthy. Then Robert will check again and he will say, no, your account has only $10, you have to order something cheaper than that. Then the life will change, that way and he will entertain everything will happen to the robot. Food safety testing technology expanding use. Even in US, USA, 39.7 billion dollar business by 2000, uh, 2020. A lot of uh, technology will come on food safety testing, GM food, food pathogen, meat, especially specifications all these uh, different method, uh, different techniques how how we sense and how we take actions if we look ourselves actually our we have five sense organ five sense organ take information physical chemical characteristics of the environment and it goes to the brain and brain has lots of logics brain analyze logic and at the end he gives some direct uh, direction to take actions. We use hand, legs, eyes, all the organs take the action. If you look at the hand, it has a lot of sensor, temperature sensor, touch sensor, uh, mechanical sensor, all the sensor. If we can give all the sensor to the robot and they all logic to the robot, he can act as a human. But human has another invisible organ is mind. Mind doesn't work on logic, but brain always works on logic. <coughs> this is just one of the sense organ uh, which we assess the test. Test guard on the tongue assess the test. And the, on the tongue you can see the test guard on the tongue. This is the photograph of the human tongue with the test guard. We have super tester and non-tested. The girls in this room are the super tested, they sense uh, any flavor uh, faster than the men. And e nose actually the replicating the sensor of the e nose. Like here I can see the cherries, the information goes to the sense organ and it goes to the brain, analyze and then it gives how you like it. Here is more clear uh, explanations of how our sense organ uh, act. Like apple, physical chemical processing gives the characteristic of the apple, and the information goes to our five sense organ, and it gives some preferences. We got sensory preferences, and we have a lot of information in the brain, like love, hate, content, aversion, hunger your advertisement, everything remain in the brain. All mixed together, integrated and gives at the end uh, your preference what has happened to you. 
E nose is a replication of the olfactory. Olfactory, it uh, plays inside the roof of the nose. Flavor goes there uh, when we eat, we, when we breathe. And also there's another, when you swallow, there's another backflow of air from inside to the olfactory. All the flavor compounds goes to the olfactory sense organ and interact and then information goes to brain to analyze. And the is the replications of the sense organ. Here, how the uh, is a olfactory and the enos work, this is com uh, clear explanations. Like coffee, flavor goes to the olfactory, then brain, then neuron analyze, and then we recognize it is a coffee. Same way, the flavor goes to enos sensor, enos uh, characterize all the flavor compounds and then with a uh, complex mathematical modeling and artificial intelligence it recognized as a coffee. Uh, flavor is very important to us with a bad smell or good smell. You can see we came to a food safety conference why he's talking about this all sense uh, organ and sensory. When food is spoiled, different bacteria create different types of volatiles. And that's why if we assess the volatiles, we can, we can characterize them. Sometimes when at home my wife says, Sophie, I cook this food a few days in the freeze. They tell what is your food scientist, tell me whether it's fresh or not. I smell, I sniff it, I say maybe it is not good, uh, good it may be not in original state. They say, no, no, I cook. I am sure it is good. She start eating and after some time say, oh, so you are right that uh, the flavor is not that right, it's spoiled food. The flavor has huge significance, not only food safety, characterization, also disease pre uh, pre uh, identifications, a lot of other, I will give some few examples, other applications, but first I will explain how Enos works. Enos first started in 1960. <coughs> 50 years, a lot of research has been done and a lot of good paper publications has been done. But I will discuss on the science part a little bit and also what happened to commercialization of the technology. This is like uh, we have a sensor in the electronic nose and volatiles comes attached to the sensor uh, sensors and gives raise the electrical potentials or electrical resistance and then it goes to we analyze in a complicated mathematical modeling and then we characterize the pattern and create artificial intelligence. There are different types of sensor, uh, available hot sensor, cold sensor and different types of sensors are being developed to characterize different volatiles but I will not go to details on the different types of sensor but I will say how the sensor works. Like here is a, a metal oxide semiconductor sensor when volatile attached to the sense organ, electrical potential uh, change and that signal goes to the computer and analyze the data. And this is another types of polymer sensor. Uh, they, when the any volatile attached to the sensor, the electric circuit created and we can measure the how much current is created from there we can characterize the sensor. Earlier it was four eight sensors available in the e nose but now uh, we have purchased one e nose which has around 32 sensors that means different types of volatiles could be characterized and different types of uh, with the different sensors. In chemical analysis, one easiest things we do one chemical analysis. We have a standard. We analyze this is content, but in sense, there's a hundreds or thousands of volatiles, and we want a one signal combination of all characteristics that makes the more complicated than any other chemical analysis. There's a lot of challenges when he knows. Masking is the one of the uh, uh, issues in sensors. That means 
if one volatile interfere other or if volatile attach to the sensor and damage the sensor that uh, called masking then our uh, response will be poor diversification of the sensor if all sensor uh, characterize same types of volatile then it's not good we want each sensor to characterize in different types of volatile then it will be good but many cases a challenge sensor poisoning the volatiles can damage the sensor quickly and calibration reproducibility other i will explain a little bit with some examples this is one examples of uh, application of enos to assess the freshness of fish you can see the enos analyze the data in pca principal component analysis the statistical techniques you can see first day second day third day fifth day and 15 days up to seven or nine days is clear separations of the signal that means seven days we can assess the freshness of fish after that it shows complicated that means the response become more complex and non-linear dynamics we need to apply this is the enos we have is handheld you can carry in hand and then first volatiles suck from the sample head space it goes to sensor and then signal goes to computer and then complicated statistical tools are being used to characterize the response these are the main parameters which could affect the signals like air standard first part second part and I will explain a little bit on this. In ENOS, one of the, in chemical analysis, we analyze one chemical. That means we take the one standard and calibrate. But in ENOS, we have hundreds of volatiles. And different food, different species will have different. How we make this standard? This is a real challenge for the application of ENOS uh, to commercial viable, uh, viability. We have taken a case studies uh, with dead peers, whether we heat the dead peers at different temperatures and you can see whether ENOS can differentiate the what temperature has been exposed to the sample. Coefficient of variance is used to uh, check the stability of the sensor. You can see if we use uh, standard references then coefficient of variance becomes very close. That means a standard reference is very important to uh, get the good results. Time to draw the sample. When you uh, want to uh, assess the flavor, sometimes we sniff uh, the food. That means there is some time required to reach volatile to the olfactory and interact. The how long it takes for the human as well as the nose. Then we, we check like 30 second exposure or to the flavor, air flavor and sensor is good. After 20 and 30 minutes, the signal is not good. That's that's the that means optimum uh, draw time is important for the sensor. Next uh, pause. We need to pause when volatiles come to the sensor at us, and then we need to clean for the running second sample. That means pause is important. First part, second part, we need to do clear. Make sure that sensor again clean before taking another reading. In this dead piece, we found around 50 second uh, parts is enough to clean the sensor. How long it takes to generate volatiles in hair space? If we have a food in the in this uh, uh, bottles, and then how long it takes to enough volatiles on hair space? so that we can take the volatiles in the e nose to analyze. Here we, we with the dead piece because it's very compact and diffusivity of volatiles in the dead piece is very low and it takes around 24 hours to uh, generate the volatiles on the head space to get the uh, good uh, coefficient of variance. These are the results with the principal component statistical tools after analyzing the signals of 32 sensors combined 1600 degree you can see and nearly most of the cases we are able to differentiate 
this piece was heated at 60 degree, this piece was heated at 70 degree, you know, 100 degree, and other is 150. So that it shows that there is a potential applications of the enos to differentiate the product based on their volatiles. Now I will explain some of the applications of the enos, not in the food safety in other issues. Many times, a uh, aeroplane has to emergency landing with the odd flavor in the plane. This is a various concern. A lot of safety issues involved. Clean air quality checking is also important use of e nodes. Microbial, the food safety, like if you, in this bottle, if we put a orange and it has different types of bacteria, it will generate different types of volatiles. If we, if we analyze what types of bacteria, what volatiles they produce, and we analyze, we can characterize the what types of bacterial spoilers and what the number of bacteria. Now people are trying to volatile in, in no signals and the number of bacterial populations also trying to correlate and so that we can simply we can uh, measure the bacterial growth. Like uh, Biogenic amines is also another compound uh, when food is spoiled, it is generated. And enos, now people trying to paper based a signal, different sensor embedded in paper, and you can use that to detect the volatiles. As I say, wide applications are now being on enos to diagnose the disease. If we have different types of disease, our, our breed has different types of volatiles and if we can characterize the volatiles then we can identify the disease. Lot of application has been done on this application. Not only that, in, in race, sports, there are a lot of applications of enos. One of the importance of enos, it can measure very low concentrations than in blood, urine, others. This, this makes the advantage. Like if you measure the hair is a good example where most of the chemicals in the body could be ident identified. Like in camel racing, uh, the hair is analyzed from chemical analysis and that could be also analyzed what types of volatiles in this hair which can indicate whether the animal has taken any drug or the sportsman has taken any drug to win the race. In the future, maybe in the future, uh, maybe uh, in a set food safety inspector can carry enos and then go to the restaurant and check the uh, quality in terms of uh, microbiology as well as the quality. Why 50 years a lot of good research has been done on enos but it's still not commercialized a lot of issues. We need to think why it is not commercialize what the issues and problems rather than just publishing lots of scientific paper and it is an uh, important uh, exploration need to be done to identify why uh, lagging the uh, commercial applications are being lagged. This is one example I am back originally from Bangladesh, Dhaka. They have a robot restaurant. You order the robot will bring the food to your table and then you take it, you will say thank you. Thank you. But it is not a real robot because he do only one task. The robot has a rail, he goes just on the rail on the restaurant, in the middle of the restaurant, he drops and goes. But it is a one step effort and as it is, he, he is doing the uh, substitutions of the uh, uh, waiter. In the future, maybe you, you can go to the McDonald's or KFC, there will be one robot in front of the restaurant, you can give some food to him, he will chew and he will say what is the quality and what is the uh, microbial state or any safety issue here, you can check yourself. And these are the people who work with me on the Enos and I would like to thank all of them and also we have funded project SQ and uh, in EBA University aligned to develop this technology uh, for the GCC countries. And thank you for your listening.
Thank you for